Hi, and welcome to Lightmint. Today we have with us Sumit Ghosh, the co-founder and CEO of short video platform Chingari. Thank you so much, Sumit, for joining us. Uh, thanks, Bengla. Thanks for having me here. So I would like to start with the current market scenario. Uh, an impression has been created with the economic recession and the interest rate hikes that crypto is dead. What are your thoughts on it? Uh, well, uh, uh, crypto is not really dead. It's just another beer cycle that we just got into. And uh, if you look, look historically, like crypto has this history of operating in cycles. Uh, you know, so we have been through three beer, uh, three beer and bull cycles uh, so far in the journey of uh, you know cryptocurrency since the launch of Bitcoin in two thousand eight. So uh, it's just another uh, beer cycle, and uh, you know, I I hope uh, uh, as as we move, you know, and things get better. Uh, by end of next year, again, we'll be able to, uh, you know, uh, you know, step into a, a bull market and things will get better from there. Okay. So moving to Gari, can you share the idea behind launching this token and the journey so far? Absolutely. Uh, so uh, Chingari uh, was created as a web to, you know, typical social uh, short video platform where users would come create short videos uh, and, and uh, like users would watch them. And uh, uh, typically, just like TikTok, uh, the initial idea was to monetize through ads. Uh, but uh, in early uh, 2021, I saw what Axie Infinity did, uh, you know, to to the gaming community and how they changed life, lives of millions of people in the Southeast Asian countries uh, like Philippines and Vietnam. I thought uh, something similar can be done also for creator economy. Uh, and then Chingari was, you know, perfectly placed to do that. So we launched our own uh, social token called Asgari. Which is also a DAO, uh, basically a decentralized autonomous organization. So the idea behind Gari was to give uh, governance rights to the users and creators of Chingari, and also uh, you know to create a universal basic income mechanism via engage to earn. So anybody who is engaging on the Chingari platform today earns Gari tokens, and uh, these tokens are you know traded uh, trading on on 25 different exchanges so it's it's like uh, money so you can go and sell them and earn real real cash and uh, these tokens also give you governance rights on the, on the chingari app so like uh, chingari owners can actually put up proposals and other gari owners can vote on those proposals and the team will actually work on those proposals to uh you know uh, uh, take the platform further okay so back in august chingari had launched its first ever video nft marketplace the creator cuts so how has that benefited the uh, creator community so far? And are there any challenges that the platform is facing? Sure. So, so Creator Cuts is like an innovative uh, state-of-the-art tech, tech uh, that we have launched for creators globally. Uh, so no other, there is no other uh, short video platform or a video platform which allows creators to mint their work as NFTs. So if you are a creator today on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok, uh, you, when, it, when you create content on these Web2 platforms, they own the content, they monetize it, and uh, they keep everything uh, from that. Whereas on Chingari, when you upload a content, you can actually mint that content into an NFT on Creator Cuts. This way, you become a perpetual lifetime owner of the content. And every time this content gets bought, sold, and traded, you earn a percentage of that. So your content remain, is, is like owned by you 100% at, at the time of creation. And then every time you earn royalties or when that content is traded by your fans. Okay. So 2021 was an incredible year for NFTs with many project launches and a lot of money being poured into this new asset class. But how has the cryptocurrency downtrend hit the NFT market? Uh, so most of the NFTs, which were, which were, uh, so if you look at, look at, look into the, uh, you know, overall NFT uh, space, uh, there, there was a lot of hype and uh, a lot of speculation, uh, which is, like a, a, a part of crypto space. Uh, so that uh, all those projects which were just built on hype and uh, you know uh, where people were just investing uh, and buying into NFTs to just flip them later, those projects have really, really suffered. Uh, if, if you look into an NFT as a digital collectible, uh, I think uh, you know people are still buying just for collecting. Uh, and uh, a, 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 you know, a, a big majority of the NFTs I feel will be NFTs with utilities. So uh, NFT uh, a project which offers uh, you know a 360 degree ecosystem and utilities to its uh, you know users and customers uh, will actually uh, you know grow and keep growing irrespective of the market situations. 
So obviously the volume volume has gone down uh, because of the bear markets. The speculators have left, but uh, I feel uh, NFTs are here to stay. Uh, there are new paradigm of uh, digital ownership to uh, to legitimize to to validate legitimate digital ownership uh, uh, on blockchain. So they're here to stay. Um, and over time, we will see new utilities and use cases uh, coming into NFTs. Uh, creator cuts is a great use case, uh, you know, uh, especially disrupting creator economy, and it's built on NFT technology. So I think over time uh, we'll we'll see them growing, and you know, um, I, I feel, I'm very positive about NFTs are uh, here to stay. So do you have like any suggestion for the investor or you know NFT creator about surviving this bear market? Um. I mean, as an investor, I would look look for projects where uh, you know there is a very good community, uh, and uh, the NFT project offers utilities. That basically gives me an idea that okay, uh, you know this project will survive uh, the bear markets. And so, if you're looking to invest in any NFT project, uh, make sure uh, you find projects with utilities uh, and uh, projects which have like really really good communities. So do you think that top investors or venture capital funds have decided to park their money on emerging tech like Web3 and have squeezed the flow of money to any traditional startups owing to multiple macroeconomic conditions? Uh, I think Web3 is, is, like is like a new space like any other space. And uh, whenever a new space uh, or a new industry is created, uh, like we, uh, the VC uh, and the P class flocks to it to invest in and you know place bets. So uh, I would not say that Web3 has actually squeezed out any capital from any space. Uh, uh, like we have seen multiple multiple of these phenomena, you know, even e-commerce was hot and then food delivery was hot. And then self, self uh, uh, like driving apps, uh, 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 there was a, you know, like multiple driving apps, this money. And now it's the time for Web3 apps. So um, the, the VC, uh, also the VC market operates in uh, like uh, various hype cycles as well. So whenever something is hot, uh, every VC wants to be a part of that, uh, you know, hot space. And that, that's what we are seeing with the three. So can you tell us about Chingari's monetization policy or the key revenue streams of the platform? Absolutely. So um, one of the uh, biggest revenue sources that we have uh, uh, is the NFT uh, or the NFT badges. Uh, then the NFT marketplace, the creator cuts, uh, where, where, where short videos are being bought, sold and traded. Uh, advertisements are another uh, revenue source. Uh, we are also going to start off uh, offering subscriptions to uh, our uh, users who want to, you know, engage in Gari uh, Gari mining very soon. So that's going live on November fourteenth. Um, uh, yeah, I mean these these are the uh, few few uh, major monetization sources of Chingari. So going ahead, do you have any fundraising plans? Uh, yeah, we are uh, right now into our Series B. Uh, so, uh, uh, like, plan, uh, yeah, plan, like, uh, uh, efforts are on. Uh, wouldn't like to comment anything, but uh, yeah, uh, right now uh, raising, uh, raising around. Okay. So, uh, also as per an ASCOM report, India has eleven percent of world's crypto and Web three talent. But do you think our uh, the country's uh, you know regulatory confusion is making businesses a bit hard for entrepreneurs? uh in a way yes and in a way no so uh, the regulations that that you see today are mostly uh limiting the exchanges so the tds and the tax 30 percent tax is kind of detrimental to the exchange operators like startups who are running exchanges uh for web3 companies or web3 operators like us uh i don't see this as a as a big challenge uh, uh, be, uh because anyways like as a normal web2 company also you pay 30 percent on your income income so uh, and TDS on whatever transactions you are doing. So uh, I don't see that as a as a big hindrance. But uh, there is uh, definitely a, a, like not like not so clear uh, regulation on how you know the three entities should be created or the three entities should operate out of India, which is why a majority of these these, these companies are being created outside India. And uh, though they are operating in India, but uh, if you if you look at how uh, we are uh like where we are based it's outside india so i think government should work on those lines and figure out how the western markets have uh like created regulations to enable web3 companies uh to be based out of india uh that would be like a really really welcome uh change uh other than that i i don't think uh uh like it's it's really uh like 
Web3 companies will do what, what they have to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if you look at the opportunity, like Web3 can be as big as what IT industry has done. So if you look, if you look at the past two decades, uh, you know, IT is today contributing uh, 200, 250 <coughs> billion dollars to the Indian GDP. Web3 has the potential to do, do the same. Uh, so I think government should look into Web3 as yet another uh, you know, industry and and, uh, and <clears throat> treat it as an industry which has a very high potential to contribute to the GDP of the country. So speaking about India's Web3 ecosystem, can you share the challenges? Like what are the challenges apart from opportunities here? Uh, so India is like a developing economy. Uh, you know, we are like the tier three uh, 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 ecosystem of the world. So uh, as a Web3 developer or a Web3 Web builder, uh, we want to focus on tier one markets. So, so, so when I say, when you are building in Web3, uh, like always think global. Uh, India as a market is still not mature enough. So you cannot really, really build a Web3 product for India. Uh, you have to, uh, like that, you can build e-commerce for India, you can build full dairy for India. But if you want to build Web3 for India, you will definitely fail. I mean, uh, India as a country has not yet matured. Uh, India's economy has not yet matured enough uh, for Web3, uh, for, for a high value Web3 startup. So I think you have to look uh, and think global. Uh, and uh, But this is now, I think next five years, India will be where China is. Uh, so five to 10 years time it will take. But uh, yeah, so the, the current challenge is that the Indian economy is not mature enough, uh, I feel, uh, for an Indian startup to just focus on uh, building for India. Uh, Indian Web3 startup to just focus on building for India. So talking about hacks and scams, they have plagued the crypto industry. Looking from an investor's point of view, do you think there is any security issue considering the thefts happening? So um, whenever there is a new tech uh, or, or you know whenever there is a new uh, you know industry being built, uh, scams uh, because a lot of new people join that and so scams and hacks are part of it. I mean uh, you you cannot say that banks have never been hacked or. You know, internet has never uh, been scammed. Like there haven't been any scams in the internet. So uh, I think whenever a new industry is being built, uh, scams and ha like hackers and scammers will be attracted to it, like uh, average people. Um, all, all I would say is uh, be very vigilant. Uh, uh, you know, when when you uh, when anybody is asking you about private key of your wallet, make sure you don't do that. Uh, be very very vigilant on uh, on vigilant on what transactions you are signing. Uh, uh, when when we, when you have wallet with money, um, and yeah, I mean just just be aware of what you are doing in, in general as a user, and and you'll be safe. Do you have anything to yeah. share with our viewers? I uh, know. I think I uh, uh, thank you again for calling me here, and uh, very excited to build a, a Web three you know first social media app out of India, one of the fastest growing Web three app out of India, and uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity to share our story. All right, then thank you for your time, for your thoughts, and for that interesting conversation, Sumit. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Take Bye. Care.